Ah, geez, look at this. You give them donuts, and what do they do? They go looking for coffee. Welcome back to Building Resilience. Maybe you remember, last time we were installing Azex sheets with Paint Pro technology into the ground and onto the house. The sheets were the board part of the board and batten siding installation. We're also gluing joints on long pieces of trim and screwing those pieces home. This time, we're going to open up the show by talking about cladding. All right, let's talk about cladding. So we are using uh, two primary types of cladding, PVC panels and PVC decking that's wrapped in vinyl. And the PVC panels are actually two different kinds of panel. The panel below me is a half inch thick PVC panel from ASIC. It's called their Paint Pro panel because it's super easy to paint. Um, and on top of that, we're gonna put a three quarter inch thick PVC batten. Up above me, we're gonna put a three quarter inch thick panel. And that is more of a panel and channel, a more contemporary look where the board and batten is a little bit more traditional. For our open joint, we're using the ASIC cladding, which is a PVC, it's 100% PVC decking that has a vinyl wrap. Open joint cladding is basically decking on a wall with large gaps between the deck boards. The system on this house has battens to hold the boards off the wall and metal trims from Tamlin to clean up the edges and transitions. Once the battens are up, they install the trims at window edges, corners, and other vertical breaks. Ready? Yeah. Next, Saul chucks pieces up to Steven, who slides them into the channels, gapped off at the bottom, and screws them into the battens. The guys use spacer blocks between decking pieces and fasten each board with two screws per end. The screw holes are plugged with matching material for an invisible look. Basically, once you know that stuff, you just keep doing that for the rest of the day. I guess there's one more hitch. The architects designed a pattern for the decking widths. Skinny, wide, skinny, skinny, wide, skinny, wide, skinny, skinny, wide. On the bigger wall, the guys try stacking all of the pieces and then gapping them as they go along. I guess because they get tired of climbing up and down the ladder. If you haven't worked with panel and channel, it's a, it's a different process. And the way that we make it look good is the use of metal trims. Now we're using Tamlin's Extreme Trim. They're an, a black anodized trim. But when I say the word trim, I'm really referring to these little pieces of metal that are all around me here. And they're how we stop and start. All of our terminations and our connections are gonna be done with these metal trims. So where our board and batten ends, we've got this projection right here that's gonna cover the cut end of our batten and our board where this belly band meets the corner, you can see it's got this little wing that sticks out. And that means if, if this edge contracts a little bit, because that's PVC does shrink a little bit, you're not gonna be able to see it. It'll also hide any imperfections in our carpentry. Of course, we have no imperfections, but in the case that we did, that would hide that. Around the window, same thing. I have another trim here. It just looks like an extension of the window and it hides that cut edge of the PVC deck because of course the beautiful part of this is on the outside and once you cut it, we wouldn't want to look at the side of that board. So the use of metal trims is really, really important and um, really, really, you know, it, it creates a very sharp look for the house. At the top of the window, another Tamlin trim piece is installed to cap the open cladding and capture the bottom of the Azek Paint Pro sheets that'll finish off the wall. You can see one of those sheets here, but the real reason for this photo is the kickout flashing. Kickout flashing replaces the lowermost piece of step flashing and is bent to direct water away from the wall below the roof. It's simple to bend and even simpler to buy. You can tell if you're on a high quality job site if you see kickout flashing installed at roof to wall transitions.
And you can tell if your rain screen is working by committing a weird science infraction. The point of rain screen siding is to allow water to escape should it ever get behind. So Michael's going to pour a bunch of water behind it, see if it can escape, and how quickly. Well, that seems to work. Pretty much as soon as he pours the water in, it escapes out the bottom. Rain screen upheld. Now, let's get back to the show. We like working with PVC. It's lightweight. We can use all of our normal woodworking tools, our routers, our saws. Heck, you can even whittle the stuff. Remember, uh, kids, always away from you, never towards yourself. Um, but the really cool thing about it is that it's recyclable. Well, I guess that's cool, but what's even cooler is it actually does get recycled. So all of this PVC scrap goes in these bins, which means that the product that they make goes back to the manufacturer. It gets recycled and sent back out to the field as new PVC. So it's a cradle to cradle product, never sees the graveyard. So we don't have to feel bad about using PVC and generating any waste because it's just going to go back into making brand new product. That is awesome. Another thing that's awesome We're at is a field trip. We're at the international headquarters of OA Design, Build, and Architecture. This beautiful building built in 1904. We're going to install some of Azac's new bevel siding over a layer of Slicker Max with some fancy spacer blocks. Because everyone likes a field trip, especially one on building resilience. <laughs> 